Mob justice has a history as old as humanity, but getting cancelled is a modern invention. The internet has allowed anonymous people to gang up and exact vengeance on any person for any reason. It's led to content creators losing sponsorships or being deplatformed entirely. Sometimes the people being cancelled really deserve it, but other times the mob goes after the wrong person entirely. Some people lose their jobs, friends, and livelihood all from internet mob justice. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels. <laughs> But a small fraction of people are able to brush it off entirely, and some even come out stronger. What separates these two types of people? I want to find out what makes someone truly uncancelable. One creator who's a prime example of this is Wendigoon. He's taken YouTube by storm, gaining over 3 million subscribers in just 3 years of creating videos. He covers everything from conspiracy theories to movie reviews to horror ARG analysis. But behind the mild-mannered Hawaiian shirt-wearing storyteller is a dark cloud of controversy that's been following him from the very beginning of his channel. Uh, I want to talk to you all and I just want to say I'm sorry. So what's really going on here? Let's take a look at the evidence together and find out what makes Wendigoon uncancelable. This part of the video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that is revolutionizing the landscape of men's grooming. I'm excited to introduce you to the latest cutting edge breakthrough from the Trailblazers who brought you precision engineered tools for your family jewels, the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped. In a sea of options to choose from to perfect your grooming routine, Manscaped undoubtedly shines, and once again, they're leading the charge to demonstrate their continued leadership in delivering superior quality and unparalleled value. With the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra, they've taken grooming precision to a whole new level with their next-gen dual skin-safe blade heads, now accompanied by an upgraded trimmer blade and interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. First, the upgraded trimmer blade features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cut through hair with ease. Tough on hair, yet incredibly gentle on the skin. Skin, say goodbye to those endless passes. It's all about getting it right the first time. And here's where things get interesting. The foil blade. Crafted to transcend the boundaries of your typical trim achieved with the trimmer blade, this foil blade is designed to leave you with a finish that's irresistibly sleek and utterly bare. Start your trimming session using the trimmer blade, then easily pop it off and attach the foil blade to get down to skin level. Think of it as a grooming tag team match. The trimmer blade enters the ring with its clean cut moves, and then the foil blade swoops in for the grand finale of unbeatable smoothness. It's like getting your hands on two trimmers, but only only paying for one. If you're part of the OG Manscaped family, this trimmer is a tribute to the classics, upholding the same features that we've all come to love. A rechargeable lithium ion battery, RPM technology for top notch performance, a travel lock for seamless portability, USB C charging, and a comprehensive three level battery life indicator. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped is not just an advancement, it's a revolution. Join the 9 million men worldwide who've put their confidence in Manscaped for all things grooming and hygiene. If my math adds up, we're looking at around 18 million balls here. Head over to manscaped.com and get your hands on the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra today. Wendigoon's real name is Isaiah, and he was born in 1999. Growing up in Tennessee in the Appalachian Mountains, he was immersed in a culture of storytelling and mystery. The people of the Appalachians have an immense respect for nature, and local legends have been told for hundreds and possibly thousands of years about who or what lurks in the forests and mountains of the region. In life you have roadblocks. As a child, Isaiah's grandfather made a point to tell him lots of stories from his family, the Cherokee. Many of these stories were terrifying tales about ghosts, monsters, and boogeymen. But instead of saying, that's great, Grandpa. Now watch me hit this clip in Fortnite like most kids would. Isaiah had a completely different reaction. I understood that objectively they were scary and that the things that happened in them were decisively not good. But they never bothered me because whenever he would tell me these things, he would just be excited. He would be so happy to share them. And anytime I'd ask him about that, I'd be like, how can you talk about this? It's such a scary, dark story. Why are you so okay with it? And he would always say, well, I've already heard it, and now I get to tell it to you. And uh, I didn't get what he meant for a long time, but a lot of these stories were stories that his grandfather would tell him, and his grandfather before him, and generations back. And like I said earlier, a lot of these stories are never written down. They never exist 
outside of one person telling it to another. As he grew up, Isaiah became obsessed with reading creepypastas and browsing the No Sleep subreddit for new horrific stories all the time. He liked watching YouTube and especially enjoyed watching YouTubers like Markiplier play scary games. Oh! Aside from storytelling and YouTube, Isaiah enjoyed shooting and working on firearms and making and sharing dank memes. In late 2018 to early 2019, he created a meme page for what he called Boogaloo Memes, and his handle online was Boogaloo Boy. The memes started out as political satire, revolving around revolution, individual liberty, and guns. But over the next couple of years, people calling themselves Boogaloo Boys would grow to become a notable faction involved in the intense political unrest and violence in the United States in the summer of 2020. But more more on that later. By the fall of 2020, Isaiah decided that he wanted to make YouTube videos. He had been watching a lot of gun YouTubers and wanted to rank them in a tier list. So on his YouTube channel called Boogaloo Boy, he posted the GunTuber tier list. And you may be asking, well, Boogaloo Boy, what makes you qualified to rank all of these YouTubers who are bigger than you? And to that I say, you're absolutely right. He posted a few more videos on a variety of topics, and then in October, he posted The True Horror of Local 58. This explanation and analysis of a YouTube horror series combined Isaiah's love of storytelling and scary stories. He presented his own unique theories on the true meaning of the mystery, which fans found interesting and refreshing. While the video didn't immediately go viral, it did set the tone for the future of the channel. At the time, Isaiah was in college in his third year of studying biology. He was starting to realize that it wasn't really for him and definitely wasn't what he expected. If he could get this YouTube thing to work out, maybe he could make a living doing what he had always loved. But if he was going to get serious about YouTube, he needed a better name. He settled on Wendigoon. As he describes it, the Wendigo is a creature that comes from Northern Appalachian legend, specifically the Algonquin tribe. It's the idea of a spirit that inhabits the souls of those who commit cannibalism. It's kind of an old urban legend within the mountains. My grandfather, as I was growing up, would tell me these stories about the Wendigo, and he would treat it like a boogeyman kind of figure in the woods. But he also taught me that the Wendigo is to be respected, because nature has nature's place and humanity has their place. He taught me all these cool concepts of lore and learning and legends that from a young age drove me towards the interests that I have now. So that's always been a personal aspect to me. And then Goon has been a nickname for guys who do weird stuff like I do when you put on night vision goggles and you go running around in the woods at night like a maniac. Unfortunately for Wendigoon, the word Goon has taken on a little bit of a more erotic meaning lately. Hey Lois, what does gooning mean? Well, Peter, according to the Urban Dictionary, gooning is the act of a very addicted or chronic master getting so into masking that the dude becomes a total goon. In other words, he becomes stupid on his own c**k and can't think of anything else but busting a c**k. Ah, that's great. With the channel name figured out, Wendy Goon started posting more and more videos. In February of 2021, he posted The Disturbing Movie Iceberg Explained. This video went viral and gained over 1 million views within the first week it was posted, and the channel jumped from under 10,000 subscribers to over 70,000. For Isaiah, the choice between staying in college and dropping out to do YouTube full time was so obvious to him that it wasn't even a choice. But just like in the scary stories Wendy Goon loved so much, there were unknown forces working against him already from the shadows. Shadows. It's August 2021. Chris Chan has just been arrested. The internet explodes as the most infamous and well-documented lol cow of all time has just been booked in the county jail. If you don't know who Chris Chan is, I genuinely envy you. You are probably a very normal and well-adjusted person with a life outside the internet. You probably watch a lot of sports and have a chocolate lab named Coco. For you, my blissfully ignorant social butterfly, just know that this person has said and done some of the most depraved things imaginable. And there's thousands of hours of video documenting the life and times of Kristen Weston Chandler. Chris Chan often posted about having sexual fantasies about their mother, the only other person they lived with for years. In July, Chris claimed to have forced himself on their 79-year-old dementia-stricken mother, which, if true, would be rape. This information was passed on to local police, who then obtained a warrant to arrest Chris Chan. Chris had also claimed to be transgender for a long time, but many questioned this, including Wendigoon, who by this time had a quickly growing audience of over 500,000 subscribers. As news of the arrest broke, Wendigoon tweeted, Calling Chris Chan, a man who mutilated his body with a box cutter because 4chan said he was a girl, holds a deep hatred for men and most women, decided to be a girl so he could hook up with lesbians, and now abused his mom, she is disrespectful and delegitimizes trans people. While many people agree with this take, it has spurred multiple allegations of transphobia against Wendigoon ever since he tweeted it. One notable Reddit post in the Wendigoon subreddit was titled, Was anyone else aware of Wendigoon's transphobia controversy that I just found out about? Not trying to get downvoted to hell, just asking. Some people in the thread did agree with comments like, I don't like a cis person gatekeeping who 
who is and who isn't trans, even if he is doing that to defend the trans community. But it seems like the majority of the subreddit disagreed with this take. With one poster saying, yes, it is transphobic to misgender someone just because you don't like them. But Christian is a whole different story. Even though most of the people on Reddit seem to agree with Wendigoon's take, to this day there are posts on TikTok, Tumblr, and elsewhere emphatically calling Wendigoon a transphobe. And it seems that if they post any evidence at all, this tweet is the only thing they have. <sighs> hey guys. I, uh, I didn't want to make this video, uh, but I've, I've grown a lot as a person lately, and I want to hold myself accountable. Uh, when, when I killed those three children, five children, it was, um, it was a lapse of judgment, and uh, I was in a really dark place at the time. As Winnegoon's channel grew, so did the attempts to cancel him, but he took these in stride and released fake apology videos to entertain his audience and undoubtedly himself in the process. And uh, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sorry for not telling you about today's sponsor, oh, Raid Shadow that. Legends. Sometimes people actually believe these and got confused, but one accusation has come up so frequently that Wendigoon felt the need to give a serious response. Cultural appropriation or cultural insensitivity is an allegation that a lot of people might not take seriously, but a lot of people in Wendigoon's audience have raised a concern about this due to his use of Native American lore in his videos and merchandise. After the Wendigoon plushie dropped, there was a new wave of outcry, with one commenter saying, it is wrong to use a Wendigo as a mascot or to sell products of Wendigo's because that's culture appropriation. Please stop. Wendigoon replied directly to this comment saying, cultural appropriation is a good way to alienate one group of people from another. The easiest way to create prejudice is to convince others that a group of people should not be interacted with. I have spoken to several natives who love the concept, yet only those who have no value in its existence say I shouldn't talk about it, indicating an indoctrinated superiority. Furthermore, when we stop speaking of cultures, they die. He then went on to say, if we develop the idea that we can't speak of certain people, then we're no better than those who silence them. But people on Twitter and elsewhere have flatly rejected Wendigoon's explanation. One thread that got hundreds of likes said, I don't even know what else to say. Every sentence of this is like whiplash. You are not preserving our stories. You are bastardizing and disrespecting them. You are not helping natives. Someone in the thread pointed out that they thought he was Native American, but the OP said, no, he's white. The poster said, even if he is Cherokee, the Wendigo does not belong to Cherokee culture. Being native is not a monolith. Outside of the brain rotting alternate dimension that is Twitter, most people don't seem to have a problem with Wendigoon's discussion and use of native stories and imagery, especially since he mentioned that his grandfather's Cherokee in his Brown Mountain Lights video. But one more serious allegation has haunted Wendigoon from the very beginning. Our state was specifically pointed out as a target in documents from the FBI, first reported by Yahoo News. Those documents said that some followers of the violent Boogaloo Boys movement are targeting our Capitol building, saying an attack isn't being plotted, but that violence was planned if fights break out. In the wake of George Floyd and the ensuing upheaval across America, people calling themselves Boogaloo Boys ambushed and killed security guards and law enforcement officers in Northern California. After a gunfight that led to the injury of one sheriff's deputy and the death of a sheriff, Stephen Carrillo fled and hijacked a car, leading police on a chase before his eventual capture. Before law enforcement arrested him, he wrote Boog in his own blood on the car he had stolen. The Boogaloo Boys commonly wore Hawaiian shirts and attended BLM rallies, assault rifles in hand. People online question Wendigoon about this frequently, as he claimed to have created the original Boogaloo meme page, and his handle online was Boogaloo Boy before it was Wendigoon. This has led to many people online speculating that Wendigoon is some kind of political extremist, with TikToks and tweets claiming that he founded the Boogaloo Boys. One commenter on TikTok said, I think my brother is falling down the alt-right pipeline because because of him. I'm trying my hardest to make him not. Winnegoon would go on to address these allegations in a post on Reddit in March of 2021. Over two years ago, I was among the first to begin using the term Boogaloo. Originally, it was a rendition of Che Guevara's, not that he was a good person by any means, code word for revolution. And I've always been a proponent of freedom and liberty. So I began using the word in small settings and then decided to make a meme page using the name as no one had done so yet. To give you an idea, my name was Boogaloo Boy, and several have pointed to me as being the original and starting the Hawaiian shirt thing as I've always just worn those shirts. However, as the term became mainstream, more ideas began to come into the group. Everything from Antifa members to fascists wanted in on it, and the original idea became muddled and broken. It became something I didn't want to be a part of, and so I left. Most fans reacted saying they either didn't care about his politics or appreciated the explanation. One commenter asked for further clarification saying, so just to be crystal clear, you're not into the whole race war, white supremacy shit that the Boogaloo guys are accused of being about? Because that'd be pretty 
up. I hope not because I love your content, dude. To which Wendigoon replied, correct. Wendigoon has skyrocketed from an upstart tier list channel in late 2020 to having over 3 million subscribers and over 360 million views just three years later. But even with his massive success, his wholesome personality, passion for storytelling, and being the internet's favorite dad haven't changed. And that is what makes Wendigoon truly uncancelable. If you like this video, you'll probably like my video about the recent two mad allegations, which you can watch here. That whole controversy shows that just because I call someone uncancelable doesn't mean it's necessarily true. My bad. If you want to dig in even more after that, I got to interview two mad on my second channel, which you can also watch right here. It's still an ongoing court case, and I'm curious to see how the whole thing pans out. I also want to give a huge thank you and shout out to my Patreon members and YouTube members who help support the channel, which helps me make more content. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay weird, internet. See you next time. Peace.